Okay, it's uh, August 26, 2014, 9.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is for my own record. I've been waiting a month since video number 22 was made for the full moon to occur again. Uh, currently, obviously right now, the uh, underneath my feet, over in the direction of uh, Los Angeles, uh, current star check. Moon is uh, underneath my feet. The Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are underneath me in this direction. And uh, I was waiting a month again for my uh, devices that I create that operate on uh, 1.5 to down to 1.5 volts to uh, start working again. And uh, indeed they do. They started working three days ago. I was eager to test. So they will work the whole time, but the effects currently are phenomenal. Uh, like I said, I'm not making any claims, I'm only stating the effects that I get. This uh, works off a completely different principle than this, but it still works off a co-gravitational field. I thought I'd try this a few days ago. In anticipation of the full moon, and the new moon, excuse me, because the uh, we have uh, three bodies underneath my feet in this direction currently. The Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are both directly underneath me in this direction. And right now, the devices that I created a few months ago are, are phenomenal, once again. They started being phenomenal about uh, two days ago, as the, as the new moon approached. Anyway, uh, the device works off the principle of Oliver Heaviside's co-gravitational field, written about also by Dr. Olaf Defenchenko. I'm not going to tell you how those are made, but a totally different device that works off the same principle, although since this is so incredibly heavy, it's hard to feel the effects, yet they're still there. My devices contain four to six parts and they work off of power and this works off of no power but it still changes the co-gravitational field. Anyway, you can take a look here. This is uh, from uh, Energy Momentum Chapter on Physical Forces by Dr. Olaf Defimchenko. I think two PhDs since passed on. This is his book. You can get it on Amazon. It's called Gravitation and Co-Gravitation. It's based upon uh, Maxwell's work and uh, one of the appendix, uh, I think it's Appendix B of Oliver Heaviside's Volume 2 on the co-gravitational field. He kind of gave up on it because the nonsense of Einstein came out and destroyed everything. He knew better and uh, basically this entire book and a lot of Dr. Olaf Defenchenko's work is based upon, he was just an expert. Still, his still book on electricity and magnetism is still required reading in some electrical engineering schools. So he's certainly no quack. He's no nut. Uh, he rejected relativity, and uh, he basically wrote an entire gigantic book full of nothing but it's about 60% formulas. But it's about the co-gravitational field. We think of gravity as you know uh, acceleration of your body falling towards Earth, etc., and whatnot. But and the important thing is that uh, anti-gravity, and I'm, I'm not making any claims that I created an anti-gravity device here, I'm, all I'm stating is the phenomena that I'm, I'm feeling is that the creation of a quote-unquote genuine anti-gravity device, since these have extremely low power, by the way, I mean, I need to ramp up a larger model than this using DC, um, is by not the elimination of gravity, but by changing the co-gravitational constant of the falling object, as an example. There are endless formulas about that in Dr. Olaf Defenchenko's uh, voluminous work. A lot of the formulas are extremely heavy. You know, some of them I can't comprehend, but I understood the principle about changing the co-gravitational field of an object. Here's one device you can build yourself, although it's really hard to feel the effects. I cast these myself. It's a uh, N50 Gauss one and a quarter inch ring magnet in between two uh, sandwiched uh, pure bismuth discs, and uh, you're actually able to feel the co-gravitational change in uh, actually like pushing this device very gently, very very gently, or propping it up on two fingers without dropping it because bris bismuth is brittle. By the way, you have to cast your own bismuth. Anyway, by actually feeling the change in the co-gravitational field of the falling object, the, I won't say whether the object's accurate at work in changing the co-gravitational field. I won't actually make any claims about any either one of these objects, but I can tell you that I've been waiting an entire month for the new moon to come around so that underneath my feet would be three objects at the same time. The Earth, which is always underneath my feet, obviously, but additionally the moon and the sun 
but I've actually noticed that it the results, while phenomenal, earlier, they're more phenomenal right now because instead of being directly beneath my feet, as the Earth, the Moon, the Sun are, the uh, the Moon is actually just over the horizon of Los Angeles. So what I have is I have the Earth underneath my feet, but I have the Moon and the Sun over here. So instead of uh, I think it was two days ago when I had the checking on uh, my astro my uh, astronomical uh, 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 Macintosh application, where it's on also Urantia.com, it's called Where is the Moon Tonight? You can actually, uh, when the moon and the sun were underneath my feet, underneath the earth, the eff effects were not as phenomenal as they were last month during the exact same occurrence when just off the horizon, off the physical horizon of the earth, is the moon and the sun. So it seems to work. The results are, I would, the phenomena I will call, I won't call it results because I'm not going to make any claims, but the but the phenomena were astounding. I was sitting here next to the camcorder, the Canon camcorder. But anyway, that's the uh, the principle of this device that I built. Although, like I said, it's hard to feel because this stuff is heavier than lead. So this is a heavy little device. It's uh, almost three quarters of a pound. Well, actually, a little less than three quarters. It's between half and three quarters of a pound of bismuth. And I got an N50 Gauss, uh, I think one and a quarter inch neodymium iron boron sandwich between there. And the principle is, is changing the co-gravitational field of this single object. Obviously there's no power here other than the dielectric inertial plane. And also the dielectric inertia of the bismuth itself. Now bismuth is diamagnetic, but the main principle of bismuth is that it has extremely high dielectric inertia. That is why it forms the crystals the way it does. That is why it has extremely low electrical and thermal conductivity. Um, bismuth is the, hel the heaviest natural stable element in the universe and uh, the reason it has low magnetic permeability and uh, it lets uh, free neutrons uh, pass through. They're used in uh, nuclear cooling in its liquid form. Nuclear cooling reactors in there like Russian submarines. Although unfortunately what happens is this. I think it's uh, inverse beta decay where neutron becomes a proton. It uh, changes uh, bismuth into radioactive polonium. But that's not important, but uh, if you like to check out this book, it's on Amazon. But that's not how these devices work. But the principle is, is that we all think in terms of gravity and acceleration of one object towards the other. We know that mass gravity is a, is an accretion of dielectric uh, dielectric forces as created in stellar objects, galactic jets, and whatnot. But the principle, the most important principle in understanding that uh, you know I had not realized because nobody's taught this stuff in school, um, although. His book on electricity and magnetism, he recently died in 2007, I believe, has still required reading. But the principle is, is that changing the co-gravitational field of the object accelerating towards the much larger object will result in, theoretically, and in principle, and from what I created from this little simple device and testing, which I wouldn't call it a device, it's just two bismuth disks and a magnet, is that uh, you can actually change the, the co-gravitational field of an object by altering its dielectric inertia. Since mass gravity is dielectricity and conglomerate, then you can change by manipulation of dielectricity, dielectric inertia, the co-gravitational field of an accelerating object like this holding in my hand as I'm actually dropping it slowly towards the gravitational field, which is easy to feel now. I can always feel it in my devices, but especially in this device I can feel it now because in this direction, right over the horizon, the moon and the sun are underneath my feet, and that's why my devices, the phenomena, is astounding. I'm not making any claims that I created any such thing. I'm only stating the phenomena that I receive, so I'm not making any claims of anti-gravity. But anyway, I was really shocked. I was so happy two days ago when the effects started slowly coming back, but I noticed that it was really predominant when the, uh, the moon and the sun were over the horizon. They weren't directly beneath me, but over the horizon. So That occurred at, I think, 9.32 Eastern Standard Time today, August 26, 2014. This is from my own record, so I know that the claims in this video are fantastical, but I'm not making any claims. I'm only stating for the posterity of my own record the phenomena that I've... The phenomena that I was returned, that I witnessed a month ago, that was so extremely startling that I've been waiting a month for them to return. So, anyway, that's the end of this video. This is really not for other people's consumption, although I'm posting it publicly. It's for my own record and to show a couple of other people regarding this. So, you don't have to believe anything in this video. I'm not making any claims whatsoever in this video. None. So, 
they're too fantastical but if you were here you'd you'd be you'd be quite impressed it's it's rather amazing it's wonderful actually it makes you feel like a little child again to play with them and actually feel that effects i have uh, given a close relative my closest relative one to uh, mess with shall we say for a short period of time and uh, he is extremely shocked and uh, extremely curious, and he was interested in taking one of these devices apart, but uh, he didn't. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this is for my consumption. I'm not making any claims in this video. I'm not stating that I'm, I have done anything. I'm only stating the phenomena that I felt. So no claims are made in this video one way or the other. So there's nothing to attack. Only stating the phenomena felt.